Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. And I'm Simon. Yes. Hey. <laughs> so uh, we've got Simon a pedal board today. Uh, here's how that went. Okay, so this is where it all starts. Um, we've got Simon's pedals here. So a few things we need to sort out: the layout and the order. Let's have a look. We've got the vent. Yep. You've got your retro vibe. It's a uni yeah. Which is lovely. Um, it's an overdrive pedal. Sympatec overdrive, okay. Octava, the Dynatram, and the Delay Workstation. Yep. Uh, chorus, Waterfall, and the Solid Booster. Okay, so your signal path, mm -hmm. where would these go? Well, generally, I would have the Chorus and Univibe and mm -hmm. the Vent. Before I would have, you know, I would, uh, that would run that into, say, the Octavia, and then. So these are these are first in the chain. Yes. Okay. Any particular order for these three? No. No. Okay. Do you ever stack these? Not really. No. no. Okay. All right. Cool. The, there's something cool that we might be able to do for that, but let's we'll get there in a bit. All right. Okay. So that's first, and then what do we have? I generally put uh, then. Yeah, I usually put the effects, the, the, the solo bus, mm -hmm. and that, that, and then these two, you know, like that. But they that both way. go into the effects, like, yeah. Okay, fabulous. All right, so, um, and you don't have a tuner on your board, you use a clip-on tuner? That's correct. How does that work? So I've always struggled with those in volume. Really? Because, well, because everything's vibrating and the tuner's just yeah. dancing and it makes no sense. But you, you, that seems to work. I never have any problems. I, uh, I I I tried it for about. I always I always for a year. I had a, ch a pedal tuner on my board as well mm -hmm. as having the clip on, just for that simple reason of. I've just never to make used sure. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's after been a year, I, I, I just discovered I wasn't using the, the tuner, so I just got rid of it. And, awesome. You know, it's more room for another pedal. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use. Um, I, I've got a question at this point. Hello, Mick here. Um, <laughs> Is there a reason that you run your modulations before the drives? Yes, because it's cool. <laughs> well, I've always just, um, if I was using, say, the gain on the amp, okay, yeah. uh, nine times out of ten I wouldn't use an overdrive pedal for uh, if I'm plugging in the mm. amp. So I just run that directly the, in line. The so in theory, it's kind of in line if you run that into a clean channel. Excellent. Yeah. That's, we've, we've talked on that on a couple of shows in the past. The good news is we've got loads of uh, car alarms going off today. Nice. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah. We should explore that when we get in there. Okay, all right. Uh, so we are using uh, Pedal Train 2 Classic. Um, the cool thing about this, and funnily enough, I've got Simon's old board here. Mick just passes that. So. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. It's a, it's, <laughs> well, it's fine, and we could clean this up. The thing about the Pedal Train 2, because we're doing. Um, we're adding some output options with the Humdinger and we're going to put a Quartermaster on here just to clean things up. But it also gives us the ability to put the cables and power and everything underneath as well. Um, and it's going to look so nice. So we've got a Quartermaster. I've done a little mod for Simon um, because we've got eight effects. So we've got eight loops here. But to give Simon the ability to use his effects loop or not, I've done a little breakout box here, which is just an insert point between loops six and seven. Um, so if Simon is using an effects loop on the amplifier, he will take the send, and that will go into the front of the amplifier. Then the effects loop send from the amp will go back into the return here. And then the output of the quartermaster will go back into the effects loop return. So basically it puts these two loops in the effects loop. Um, but if you're not using an effects loop, you just unplug that and the signal goes straight, straight through. through. It's basically uh, for cable method, isn't it? It's exactly what that is. Yeah. Exactly what that is. So it's just, I mean, you could do exactly the same thing with simply a loop, and you'd have the loop turning on, you know, the send out the amplifier, return, etc. But then um, you lose a loop. But then you lose a loop to do yeah. that. Um, and because I wanted to keep things as tight as possible, we had eight pedals, um, you know, this is, it's going to be, Compact and things are going to, you know, it'll be tight, but it's going to look great. Um, if we had a 10, a QMX 10, just to have an extra loop for the 
amps affect sleep, sort of, it's not as efficient, shall yeah. we say. Uh, yeah, so done that. Then we're going to have a humding at the end to give the option of using two amplifiers. That's great. Um, yeah, okay. So I shall crack on. You guys are welcome to go and jam and, and you know. Okay. I reckon just make you uncomfortable if we start. Yeah, yeah, no, great. Right. That would be great. Much. <laughs> So we have brackets to fit the quartermaster to the pedal train. Um, you could Velcro it, but we've got brackets and they're very cool. I'm going to show you a trick with these cable ties. If you're ever using big cable ties like this on a board, I mean that looks unruly, so I'd clip them off. But you need to be aware these edges are really sharp, so once you've clipped them off, just take off the corner just like that right next before we put the velcro on i'm just going to check layout um, so okay now the signal path is going through here vent chorus Rotor Vibe, Retro Vibe, sorry. Solid Booster, Octavia, the Simbatech, and then Dynatrem and Delay. So that's the signal path. However, we need to be aware that there are two pedals specifically that Simon's gonna to need to get his feet to, which is the mini vent to change the speed, and then the delay workstation to turn on and off the reverb and also for the tap tempo. So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we have the delay at the end and the mini vent at the start. So as long as we have those two there, um, then it pretty much doesn't really matter where everything else goes. The great thing about having the angled board is that um, when Simon goes to add the delay work station here, it's a different level yep. uh, to, to, for the tap tempo. So it's not going to knock into those. As opposed to if the board was flat, yep. um, it's, it becomes a bit more problematic as far as he then has to lift his foot over that. So that's one great thing about having an angled You know he wears board. extended pixie boots though. Well, yeah, with yeah, a, of course. With a vastly pointed toe. Who doesn't? I mean, that's. Are you not there yet? <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've done that, Mick, if you pass me my phone. So then what I'll do, I'll take a picture um, and Instagram it. No, I'll take a picture <laughs> because I can work. I, I something to reference back to because I, what I need to do now is take everything off the board and then start with the doing with the, the Velcro and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, but then I've, you know, I've got that. I know Simon's happy with that, so I can always refer back to that. Groovy. So the reason you put Velcro across the whole board is what? If you don't put Velcro across the whole board and if you just Velcro the points underneath the pedals that you want to stick down, nine times out of 10, when you lift the pedal up, you'll push, you'll pull all the Velcro up with you. With Velcro all the way across, um, it's added strength so that when, when a, if a pedal gets stuck here, it, you know, it'll, it'll pull up yeah. and without taking the rest of the Velcro with it. Also means you can move stuff around, doesn't it? If, move, you, yeah, if you decide you want to just yeah, change yeah. something and I mean, this is what you, swap you know, something out. You end up with... Looking for this? That one. So... Yeah, and when you want to change things, it's it's ugly, you know. So that makes it a much uh, easier proposition for moving things around, adding different stuff. And using regular um, loop side Velcro for the face. So using regular loop side Velcro for the for the board, but I use pedal board tape. Uh, strips of pedal board tape for the pedals because so this is going in a in a flight case. Simon, uh, you know, this, this will be traveling on planes and things. So the pedals, although they need to be able to 
come off should things change. That pedals need to be securely attached. So, because this stuff, if you have two layers of this stuff, it's like it's you, very, may well, it's, you may as well glue them on. It's, yeah, 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 it's very difficult. It's quite difficult to get them on and off. But this, know. as you say, once they're in there and you've got the lid on, it's very secure. the lid stopping them from coming off that way. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's good stuff. And multiple applications. It does wear out eventually. This stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get. I mean, you've got. A bunch of pedal changes there before you have to sort the Velcro oh, over. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Nice. Right, okay. Oh, he's such a messy worker. So we're using um, Gigrig Modular Power Supply, uh, and there's brackets that enable this to go on the end so that someone just has to plug an IEC cable. No matter where in the world he is, he can just plug any IEC cable uh, into the side and it will work. So, let me show you how that's done. Okay, so we're doing patch cables now. Um, we've got everything ready to do the power underneath, um, but there's enough space um, with the pedal so I can easily get to where the power goes. So I'm going to do the cable. So I'm using uh, Evidence Audio uh, SIS, which stands for Screw In Solderless. Postman's here. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, uh, Martin, how are you? Thank you very much. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> Thanks. Right, now Dan, I right. think this will be an interesting interlude. Okay. This this could be quite this could be quite um. So I'm all about the diversion. You know this. I'm pleased about this. This is a parcel wrapped up in gaffer tape, which suggests there might be something interesting in it. Okay. Very rock and roll. Genuine. Oh my goodness. Genuine mass produced TS10 tube screamer with missing knob. Nice! Just in case we feel like doing a, a, a show on tube screamers anytime soon. Okay, that's a great idea. How cool. Now, that is um, your mate's favourite, right? My mate? Yeah. Which mate's that? You know, um, what's his face? John Mayer. Maya, that's him. Yeah, apparently. Maisie. Yeah. And apparently Steve... Uh, Jono! St oh, old Steve Vaughan. Steve-o! Stevie Ray Vaughan liked a TS-10 and a TS-9 and a TS-08 and any cheese screw we could get his hands on. Anyway, saw it on uh, the old interweb there. At the bargain price of 140 quid for a mass-produced crappy old pedal. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, anyway. Um, actually, I should say thank you to Beryl Guitars of... Uh, Kidderminster, who, who I bought it from. Oh, lovely. Great service. Nice Very guys. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, resuming normal service. Um, right. This cable, so this is the monorail cable. It has a solid copper core and the copper braid around the outside. If you have a look on the inside of this um, plug, which is brass, um, it's a nickel plated brass, I believe, a chrome plated brass, something. Anyway, on the inside is a thread that is part of the tip, and that thread connects to the copper core. So the difference between this and normal solderless patch cables, where you have a pin that goes in, into a, like a, a braid of wire, the issue that I have with those copper, with those solderless cables, is you never really know how good the connection is. But with this, as soon as it's screwed on, so can I can, pull it? Can I pull it? Pull it pull We've it. done this before. We're going to do it again. Look at that. He's actually he's tugging on that with some <laughs> tug factor. Tug factor. Is there a tug factor? Like there is now. You know, like tug of war. 
you think teams would get rated on a tug factor? Yeah. No, well, they, yes, teams should be rated on a tug factor. You I, know, absolutely. Western Samoa, 27. <laughs> Scotland, 27.5 on a good day. Very good. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and then you, so you screw that on, you bend the cable over, and then you just put the cap on, and you have a fantastic patch cable. I was using the monorail cable for years when I was doing soldered leads, because I just didn't like any solderless stuff. But then they came out with this, and I was totally sold. I've done thousands of these over the years. Never had one fail. Expensive, um, isn't it? It's not cheap. The only time they fail is when I make them. Right. There's a, like everything else, there's a knack. <laughs> there's human error. And one thing I like about the pedal train stuff is the cabs go underneath the rails and you can it's gonna look so neat and lovely. Power then Daniel. Power then. We've done the cabling, cabling. you've explained um, how the cables go together, and yep. you've done that on every single cable. Yep. You've run them uh, underneath here, so it goes from the switcher to each pedal individually. Correct, Amondo. Because each pedal sits in its own loop, obviously. Now we're on to power. We are. So, power comes in here. Power comes in here. It goes to the distributor, which is not just a clever name. It does, it actually distributes. What it says on the tin. It does, exactly. So, um, so we do have, we have the Kiri workstation, which is going to require a time lord because that uh, digital yep. bit juicy. And then the mini vent is going to require supernova with a reverse polarity with adapter reverse, on the end. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, because that's 12 volts. Um, everything else is low I'd just current. like to say that Simon brought a mini vent because he, he, he played mine. Yeah, I don't mean they're incredible. Uh. It is, yeah, it is amazing. Um, so yes, so the way this the way this works, in case anyone hasn't seen a build before, the um, isolated distributor they come with their own power cables. So what you do, so nine volt input on here. So I plug the cable in on the Octavia. I'll run this cable back to the distributor uh, to the isolator. And the isolator is plugged into the distributor. Exactly. And the isolator can output how many? So each isolator has four isolated 9 volt outputs. 150 milliamps? Uh, 100, about 135. Yeah. So all your, uh, pretty much any overdrive pedal. Yeah. Most, most pedals. As soon most as standard got, 9 volt pedals. Yeah. As soon as they've got boss pedals, all digital that stuff. business in them like the vent or the uh, delay workstation. They require more current and they require... It's not just... So lots of... All the TC electronic pedals work fine off the isolator. Lots of digital pedals are fine. Um, Boss DD6, or they're all fine from isolators. It's It depends on the processor and how much power they're using. Some of those can be very current hungry. Greedy. If you're watching this wondering, well, hang on a minute, why don't I just use my daisy chain and... Uh, I don't need all this gubbins. Go and watch two recent issues. Actually, one of them's not that recent. Uh, Vic P, which was the our legend of Vic P. The legend of Vic P. Uh, voltage, current, polarity, isolation, which we did many months ago, and very recently we did um, a show on noise and how to get rid of it on your pedal board. And a big part of that is making sure everything is correctly isolated. Yes, right? absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's it. Now, just uh, as you've seen as you've got it upside down there, mm -hmm. tell me what, what this is for. Okay. This is the insert point between loops six and seven. Yep. So, basically, I did that so that Simon didn't have to remember to turn on a loop on and off. So that when he connects the preamp of his amp into the signal chain, um, and also, it would have been a, it would have been a quarter master ten, which would have been a bigger pedal board. So we've kept we've got eight pedals, everything's in a loop. I've got an insert point between loop six and seven, which goes out to here. So if Simon is using the preamp sound, it's just the if you imagine the signal path that comes along. What you mean is if he's using the effects loop. If he's using the amp's effects loop, and basically what that means is he's using the amp's preamp 
and then he wants to see the was to break after the preamp, send that signal to some other effects, and then that, that signal goes to the power amp. So you imagine the preamp is just another effects pedal. He, he, Dan always has an interesting way of explaining that, and sometimes when you say it, I. It's, most people don't explain it that way, do they? They no. explain it like if you're using the preamp, but actually, you're right. You're, you're saying that the preamp is another pedal, exactly. same as everything you, else. You think of the, the, the gain and volume and tone of that whole section, just think of that as a pedal that lives on top of the amplifier. So you're just putting that in a loop, like everything else, but the preamp pedal basically stays on. So this will go from the send into the input of the amplifier, and then out of the effect send, which is after the preamp. So there's your pedal. Yeah, yeah. Effect send back in here. Which is not quite the same as just connecting this to the send and return on your loop. No, it's no, a different no. thing. Yeah. No. Okay. So if if Simon plugs his guitar in the input and the output of of the uh, QMX eight. Yep. It'll all still work. Do it, so. And the, these pedals will go in the front. Absolutely. And if he plugs something in here, it'll automatically he'll break. Be using his loop. Exactly. It'll yeah. break between loops six and seven. That's clever. Huh. I was due. <laughs> well, I've left a bit of a mess, but. Um, there we go. All done. Uh, let's go and see what Simon thinks. Okay, he's built the board. If you rewind to the top of this video, what you just heard is actually when we brought the pedal board in and plugged it in for the very first time. Uh, we've got two amps running today. We've got uh, Victory V30, the Countess Mark II, and we've got uh, Sheriff 44. Um, Simon has recently joined the Victory Amps family. And actually, uh, how I reconnected with Simon just recently is I was actually shooting some video for Victory Amps. And uh, we plugged Simon's pedal board in, and there was a bit of a hiss. A bit, yeah. <laughs> a lot of hiss. <laughs> and I don't know if you said to me or if I said to you, I think you need to talk to Dan. I don't know, I can't remember, but it was, yeah, I couldn't hear anything past the hiss. <laughs> And that's how that all came about. So um, Simon's actually on holiday with his family uh, down near us, where we are. Uh, so he's come in and what you just saw just happened. And what you just heard was Simon plugged into both the amps. We'll explain the signal routing in a minute. So mm -hmm. Daniel, we tested nothing. We've tested nothing. You've wired it. Oh. Yep. <laughs> We've done nothing. We, we literally wanted to do this as it happened. Mm -hmm. So let's see what works. Okay, right. <laughs> let's go from the top then, vent. So okay, this is this is this is the the amp just by itself. We we are using um, the, the preamp is in basically pop between loops six and seven uh, with a little mod that I did for the quartermaster. Mm -hmm. um, but all the overdrive at the moment is coming from the preamp. Yep. Um, so if we can just hear that for one second. <laughs> Actually, at this point, Simon, is that how you would have the amp set? Do we want to set it up as you would have it set? No, that's generally how I would set it. Um, obviously, be a bit louder for the gig, but yeah, you know, it's that's generally the way I set amps. Okay, so you have the amp yep. dirty. Yep. Cool. So you pretty much straight dirty all the time, though. There's no. Uh, well, I generally I use the volume on the guitar to and, clean up. Yeah, if it's like you know. how much you bag it off you know the thing about this guitar it it kind of really brightens up it thins out a little bit you know in the low end mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't mind that so um, that's most of my sound is basically got from the guitar and in, in regards to overdrive and clean sounds this you know it splits the pickup mm -hmm. from a humbugger to single coil so that's on full humbugger it's not fully clean but yeah, yeah. 
I never really truly play that clean unless sure. it's a you know if it's a soul gig or something where I just use a clean amp yeah you know? right um, but yeah okay right and so just from that everything full bore gets you to I've just noticed something. The reason it's sounding a bit weak is because the victory's on the low power mode. Let's try this. I'm just going to take it down a little bit. Just try that, sir. Happier? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever used the high power on that one. <laughs> it's so loud anyway. We, we've but got a bit of buzz as well. Mm -hmm. A bit of hum coming from somewhere, so. Yeah, okay, I wanna, I wanna have a look at that. Yeah. Um, just a quick explanation of what happened. Uh, what I've done is I've put the earth going to the front of the amplifier is now done between the sends of loop six and seven. Um, if you're using a high gain amplifier, sometimes the the preamp, the, the, the front of the amplifier, doesn't like an earth connection between the front of the amplifier and the back of the amplifier, which is typically where the um, effects loop connections are. So we've isolated, um, so we still have an earth um, from the split between loop 6 and 7 going to the front of the amplifier, so it's very safe, but now we have the two isolated outputs going to the effect loop returns of the amps. And what we're hearing now is gain. We're hearing loads of gain. So yeah, how you... much gain, Simon? That much. That much gain. So it's <laughs> quite right. a bit of gain, and that's what you're hearing. Okay, so let's go through them then. Let's, let's uh, hear the vent. Lovely. How would you normally use that then? What would you? What was? What would be the context in which you would use something like that? I use it in various situations. Um, I have a song on my set which is called "Go Down Gambling," which is an old blood, sweat, and tears song. Oh, yeah, and cool. There's, and there's a little part in it where it goes. You know that, but on its own, it doesn't sound that cool. But if you switch that on and put it on the fast mode for me. So that would be the most I would use it in, uh, you know, a high gain setting. Um, a lot of the other time it would be more for just, you know. Just sounds dreamy. So good. So good. So, uh, w one of Simon's gigs is in a band with a guy named Don Airy, and if you don't know Don Airy, is look him up on Wikipedia. But uh, Don plays awesome Hammond, and he uh, tell us about his stage rig. His stage rig is pretty big. It's um, well, uh, well, on his solo shows, he runs a Leslie cabinet through a Hammond B3 or something. I'm not too sure what it is. And then he had runs that into a Marshall stack as well. So oh. it's full on rock mode. Um, and he also has a couple of keyboards. He's an old, he, he loves his Moogs. Um, so he's two Moogs he usually brings with him. Um, but yeah, it's quite funny because when I do the gigs with him, 
you know, this uh, monitor guy is always going, do you want some of Dawn on your monitors? Nope, definitely not. <laughs> it's all the way over there and I can hear him. <laughs> it's so loud. But when you stand there, it's just like, oh, that's, 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 that's the sign. Yeah, you, know, right. you can buy a Nord or something, or, you know, give you a, a sign that will be a little bit like that, but just to stand there and feel that and just it's like, no. So has he seen your vent yet? No. What do you think he'll say? <laughs> He'll probably uh, sack me. <laughs> <laughs> or, or he, he could probably just give me one of his Leslie cabinets and I'd be quite happy with that. Yeah, yeah, and a roadie. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. So um, modulation is obviously uh, a, a big part of your world. Because yep. we've got, if, if my, unless my eyes are deceiving me, we've got three modulations on there, have we? Mm -hmm, that's, is that, that's what that is, isn't it? It's a yeah. chorus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how do you pick and choose? Let's have a listen to them, and, and how do you pick and choose what you're going to use? Okay, this chorus. chorus I use it in two ways I use it as with delays and reverbs you know get that kind of really nice kind of like 80s 90s kind of mm -hmm. clean sound or I kind of use it if you turn the, the speed up you, know, depth, you get that more fusion in a way if you want to sound like Mike Stern Mike Stern yeah. <laughs> That's, that's only when I feel, you know, in the mood to play something a little bit off the wall. Um, but most of the time it's just uh, kind of normal, you know. The cool thing about this pedal is you can switch it to be a vibrato, you know. Nice. Do you remember when we were talking about the VB2? Yeah, because the, the assumption with vibrato is that it's a smooth yeah. wave, but that's not smooth at all, is it? It's kind no, it's, of really. Yeah, there's there's different pedals. You can you know, give you different uh, waves. That one is, it's a bit like a square wave. Um, I've had ones before. Where they're very smooth, and but it just depends. I don't use the vibrato all the time. It's very yeah, rare yeah, to yeah, use yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was the C2 we were C2. talking about, wasn't it? It was not the VB2. We were, we were yeah, in, yeah. with Tor in yeah. Denmark, and we. Uh, just a lot of the times of the chorus, people going for a good chorus sound have this lovely sine wave, and they mix the the original sound on top of that. And I was telling Tor that I'd never heard a really, really good mm. C1 right. um, chorus clone. I said, "Well, check this out." And so, so I got rid of the, the uh, direct signal, and the just the um, vibrato signal. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it was all over the place. Mm. It was really fascinating. And when you when you heard that then paired with the dry sound, and that's when all this character of the yeah. of the, the chorus came out. And it sounds to me that, that is that's what's going on there, sort of copied on a the sort of more less symmetrical yeah, yeah, yeah. lines it's got much more character, yeah. hasn't it? Awesome. And then a vibe. So a lot of people might think that Rotary speaker, chorus, and vibe are all in a similar because there's. I mean, these two both have a phasing relationship. Yeah. But it's you're obviously a big fan of those kind of soupy, syrupy sounds. Yeah, you know, I, I just love. Um, as I remember, Steve Lugger, they're put, putting it once. He says it's, he calls it grease. It's right. just like grease on the guitar. <laughs> um, so I like, you know, obviously choruses and univibe is my, my favorite, you know, uh, effect. 
of all time. That and, and a Leslie simulator. Mm. I've always won. and the chorus is, it's great. It's you know I use it very subtly on various songs, um, which just gives it a bit more spread. Univibe is, if you want to play like Hendrix, it's it's there. Um, but yeah, I like you know things that add effects. You know, overdrive pedals are great, but I don't really use a lot of them. Um, I usually just generally have one. That's the, the, the one here. Um, I have a solo boost, but that's just for boosting either yeah. the pedal or the or the amp. Mm -hmm. you know, um, well, let's have a listen to the. Um, so this is the Jam Pedals Retro Vibe. Mm -hmm. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> man alive very nice and brings into a very interesting conversation which is where do you put your uh, univibe pedal in relation to your overdrive because are you aware of the difference between the Trower and the Hendrix school of doing it not really I don't really pay too much attention I've always done it my way and that's you know because most of the time I uh, I've always plugged directly in and then I'm you know, used mm -hmm. to gain, so for me, pedals are always in front, so that's why I always put, you know, like uh, the choruses and uh, uni vibes before my overdrive. Yeah, right. It's, it's really interesting because the, the common accepted thing is that Hendrix had his uni vibe after his first, right? Yeah. Robin Trower runs his uni vibe before his overdrive. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, what what is actually happening is that Hendrix had his Univibe in between two overdrive stages because he's got his fuzz and then and the Marshall is cranked. Yes. So you're kind of in that school of because the amp is overdriving after the Univibe. So if your Univibe sounds weird, running it after your overdrive into a clean amp, that's why because the amp, the drive needs, yeah. needs to be working a bit more. Yeah. And I hadn't, I hadn't really twigged that quite as heavily as when we were having the discussion earlier, which hopefully will be in the edit that, that you saw earlier. And it does, it... it well, I find generally, if I put the Univibe, say, you know, a uh, distortion before that into the clean sound, it just takes over the sound yes. too much. Yeah, so, yeah. So that you're getting the full frequencies in it. It's just a bit... Yeah, if you listen to the way that Eddie uses his, like, the Phase 90... Yeah. And it's going into the dimed amplifiers, mm. and you, you, the character of the, of the of the effect is there, but it's not. You're not hearing the effect. The effect is just adding a bit of character to that sound. It's yeah. adding movement, as opposed to take the distortion pedal, put that into the phaser, mm. and you get this, yeah. and that sort of is overpowers everything. Yeah, yeah, like, I love that. It's like taking a wah wah in the effects loop. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. comments going, can you please put a wah-wah in, in the effects loop? <laughs> ah, kill me. What's next then? Are we going Octavia next or are we going to talk about delay and reverb? Um, let's, well, I want to try. Actually, yeah, let's try some Let's try some things in the loop. So we've got the delay, uh, the, the delay workstation in the loop and also the Dynatram in the loop. Okay. So let's try the tram first. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lovely. And I stuck the um, reverb on there because I couldn't help myself. Uh, it's all right. Well, I, I play with reverb on all the time. Do you? I, I find it very difficult to have um, a guitar sound without sounding like it's in a hole somewhere. Right. Yes, that is very interesting. What's going on there then? I'll work it out. I'll What's going out. on there? This is the thing with effects loops. Yeah, this is, uh, so quite often, Dan and I will talk about effects loops and say, all effects loops are very different and they're a pain in the backside. And the hum that we're having today, and this, and that is an example of, of that. So you're going to have to get your solving hat That's on. That's all right, I, I shall solve it out. Yeah, and we shall learn. We I'm here to give you a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I have, you know, this is on, you know, most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't like the sound of this. It's great for recording and then you can add reverb afterwards, but right. if I'm playing... Man, alive. <laughs> You were saying something very interesting before about how you can have, with a shorter decay time, you can have more reverb. Yeah, you can put a little bit more, you know, obviously when you put your decay up, like this, you know. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it sounds lovely, but when you're playing, it just kind of muddles things up a bit. But I find you can only really hear the reverb then after you stop playing. Yeah, right. Uh, so what if I keep the de decay down? You can add a little bit more. It's like when you That's play... That's great. It's really roomy sounding, actually. Yeah, well, I always, you know, if you... When you listen to two mics, you know, directed on a cabinet, you know, through headphones, it's basically just really, really dry. But when you think about it, if you're standing on stage or standing anywhere in a room, you're not sitting listening with your ear to the speaker. Mm. So you're, you're getting the natural kind of room sound anyway, you know. That's probably a bit overkill, but just it's somewhere in between. So it's a false way of creating that nice environment to, you know, Sounds play fantastic. In. Some guys do that using a very short slapback delay, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. Matt, for example, Matt Schofield. Mm. <laughs> Old man noises bending over. Um, does it with a super short slapback delay. Yeah. Same, for the same reason. Just gives it that, to use Lukather's thing, you know, grease gives it a bit more. Yeah, it just, it just makes, you know. Actually, Lukather. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I've met him loads of times. <laughs> but now and stuff, I've interviewed him on the phone a few times as well. Wow. Sorry, okay. the, the name drop horn, in case you don't know, happens when we drop a name of somebody that we either have met Just or we know. In general conversation. Okay. But we have to know them. Okay. Yeah, and we know them. Okay. Well, or have met them. Have met them, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, like. Not stalked them or anything. No, no, no. <laughs> no stalking a, is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> right. Um, what about, okay, what about delay? Delay is uh, probably my second most favorite effect. Okay. I, I, try, I use it on, if I could use delay on every solo, I probably would. <laughs> um, again, it's just that, that comfort thing, it just f makes it smoother, makes it more, more easier for me to play. Uh, let me see, this is probably all set up wrong. I probably should not sit there. There's my sunglasses. Delay. And so he, ha he has a list on the bottom. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we had uh, this. We, we've we've put this in a pick and mix just recently. Yeah. Delay workstation, and uh, I don't know which is which. Do you, Dan? No idea. Yeah. yeah.
You can delay is one of those things you can do as many different things as you want. You mm -hmm. can have it very subtle. Do the extreme. <laughs> way too much and is it always that do you always go for that kind of um uh, time that that kind of yeah i generally because this this uh the delay workstation is has the tap tempo on it so it's mm. very cool so it's i just tap whatever song i'm in yep roughly to the same tempo um before i used to use the same delay speed all the time it was, it was about 418 milliseconds just about 418 only reason i know that was because <laughs> i can't remember the delay pedal i had for a long time it was it was either the dd7 or the dd3 at the time the boss one yeah and i only went to 418 oh, okay <laughs> so i was like that's what i like there so um yeah but the, you know uh, I, I met robert uh, about five six weeks ago in dallas and he Give me that and, and pretty much every other pedal that he does. Uh, but I just love this because it's so good. It's an, it's reverb delay in one small box. Whereas I before I would have to bring out you know two pedals to do that. And, mm. and I had my other delay pedal, which I normally use, uh, was a TC Electronics. Yep. The big one, the big blue flashback. Oh one. yeah, yeah. Yep. Times four. Which, as you can imagine, would take up half of that board. <laughs> so when I got this, it sounds really really good and uh, uses a quarter of the space. Yeah. That's great. Lovely analog dry through in there. It does. It does, absolutely confirmed that with Robert himself yep. last week. Um, yeah, very cool. Okay, I'm really interested to see how you use gain pedals okay. with that sound. Well, generally, we see the gain on the sound is... It's not heavily over overdriven like again on the amps at one. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. This is this one here. Link as heck. <laughs> Sorry, can I just yeah, just have a play? It's like on, and and then just compression on nothing. Yeah, I think it, um, so. That's a pretty meaty pickup, right? Yeah, th this this is quite how I put this guitar anyway. So it will. Yeah, you def uh, if you if you had your telly down, you'd definitely hear more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because okay, right. Because uh, that that humbucker's kicking it like yeah. right from the beginning. Okay. But yes, they, it, there's a tremendous amount of overdrive. It's huge. Yeah. And I don't. That would probably be the most I would use on a typical type of solo, but for the more faster things, obviously require a little bit more gain. Right. Um, so I would generally use the solo boost, um, which it's it's just like a line boost pedal. But I've tried many different ones, and you know, uh, they sent me that, and I instantly just put it on the board. Went that's that's staying. You know. So this is from Real Tone Effects. Now we yeah. we looked at the. Fat Larry many moons ago in um, in a pick and mix. Yes. So this is the other. Is the guy's name Michael? Am I getting Michael, that right? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Well done. It's amazing what goes in. I can't remember to do basic things like laundry and washing up. But <laughs> you remember? You remember oh, Larry? <laughs> okay. So how would you use this, Simon? Literally just.
man alive. That's that's ace. That's amazing. So I just like I because when he first kicked it in there, it was like unity almost. Is, is it on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about it. it doesn't it's really, super clear sounding. And just it's like literally you're going up to your amp and turning the gain. It's a different world for us, isn't it? Because Dan mm. and I tend not to use amps with anywhere near that amount of gain in it. So the effect of overdrive and boost pedals is is really totally different. Yeah. Compared to something with more with more headroom. Mm. Um, right, I want to hear I want to hear the Octavia. Okay. <laughs> That's very good. Oh, man. You know that thing where you go onto the neck pickup and it, and it picks yeah. up the... It's that Jimmy thing, isn't it? Instantly. Yeah. That's cool. Who's that That's boy? so cool. It's a... Uh, I got it in Germany of a guy... I don't even know how to pronounce it. Val... Valbruch? Valbruch! Yeah. Well, but you have to I've, shout. I've tried lots of... Uh, <laughs> huh. I've tried lots of Octavia pedals and I never really liked any of them and... I tried this one and went, that's just nuts. It does sound that's good. fantastic. Like uh, so it's right. just a straight fuzz if you don't have the... Can I, do you mind if I just hear the fuzz? Yeah, yeah. Just without the octave in a minute? <laughs> Wow. Uh, uh, on this, sorry, we're slightly dumbstruck. He's not the worst guitar player in the world. <laughs> um, so with all that gain in the front of the amp, mm -hmm. I see you were telling me earlier about the Synvertec. Yep. Which is used if you get a cleaner amp, is that right? Generally, yeah. I, if I fly in somewhere and have to plug into whatever, a Fender or, or a Marshall, it's just safer just to use an overdrive pedal, mm. stick it in the clean. I mean, there's no uh, wiring up stuff through the effects loops. Mm -hmm. and, you know, as you know, you get problems with effects loops. Yeah. Um, this pedal, I, I, I've tried lots of overdrive pedals, and, and the, most of them are all really, really good. I just find this one works with um, every amp that I've, I've tried, and I can get the, kind of the same sort of sound that I want. Right. That might not be right for everybody, yeah. But for me... God, imagine that, a guitar sound that was right for everybody. We'd be in trouble <laughs> then, wouldn't we? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, n I would never use it in front of a, an overdriven amp. So if we make the amp cleaner, then... Yep. I'm interested in this. Okay. So here we go. Um, turn Clean the, channel? Yeah, turn the treble off, please, Daniel. <laughs> So the V th So it's either very clean like that or you can use it in the Clean Just clean. So this That's one. It, yep. Yeah. Hopefully it's. The thing is with this pedal, you always have to teach you about ten seconds to fiddle with it just to get it. I 
For me, that doesn't sound too far away from... That's very good. It's very good indeed. Very good. Sorry, let me just... So that's with the pedal. Mm -hmm. This is with the uh, overdrive channel. <laughs> Okay, and this is the pedal. That's really That's good. That's really good. Really good. Wow. What's that called? It's called the number five by Simvertech. It's the the guys from Simvertech are making me my own signature one, which this is what it's based on. Um, so yeah, there's a few tweaks. Obviously, with this one, it's it's I just like a little bit more bass because when you hear when you plug the uh, the sound of the preamp of the amp in, it's a little bit more bass heavy. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas that doesn't have as much bass. So I'm, hopefully, when we get the finished product, it will be even closer sounding. Very good. Yeah. Very very good. Very wow. cool. Very cool. Wow. There's some. Um, I think we should. Uh, let you flick through, get some sounds up, see what's taking your fancy. Okay. And okay, uh, back to the overdrive. <laughs> That's why I never put overdrive. <laughs> I found my overdrive. You get a lot of noise. <laughs> That's what I'm used to.
my favorite pedal in the world. <laughs> it sounds killer. It sounds absolutely killer. It's nice to hear one on humbuckers as well. Because normally when you hear Octavia's, they tend to often be with strats and yeah, and stuff. Very, 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 very nice. Wow. <laughs> wow. Man. Cool. Yeah, it's taken me a while actually to, you know, I have so many pedals at home, but it's taken me a while to gather up core pedals that yeah, I use yeah, 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 all yeah. the time. Yeah. I think what you, one of the benefits of doing it this way is that, you know, if you decide next week that actually you prefer a different chorus or a different octave or a different solo boost, you just whip it off, put the next one on there, and it's not like a whole, yeah. you know, pain to, to do that. Because um, you've got a bit of space on there as well, which is nice. Yeah. See, if, there was, if this was me wiring up this board, I'd see all that space and well, I'd get a few more on there. <laughs> but no, this is why I got you. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, it's unusually palatial. I would say, for you, Dan? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny enough, I, when I got the measurements, I got the pedals, and and I thought, um, you know, QMX8, get all those in there, put the insert in, but I thought it was going to be really, really tight. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I so I even I'm surprised. But yeah, you happy? Yeah, I just sit and look at it all day. Not even plug into it, just sit and look. Go, it's, it's, it does that. Yes, it's nice. Oh, great. Excellent. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us, Simon. Yeah, thank you so much, mate. Before really we appreciate thank you very sign much. off, um, Simon would be too modest to say himself, but you do have a new record coming out, I believe. Yes, I have a new record coming out um, next year. It's through Ear Music, Adele Records, same company. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, you've uh, got an actual record company. Yes, I do. It's one of the big wow. ones too. <laughs> oh my goodness me! <laughs> Imagine that in this day and age. Yeah, no, I, I, it's it's a recent thing. I just signed to Ear Music in the last kind of three months. Oh um, well, congratulations! Thank you very much. They're they're a big label. They look after you know Deep Purple and Chicken Foot and Thunder and lots of those. They're they're a very good label still, and they're one of the labels left who actually really care about what the artist does and right. actually promote the artist, which is why I kind of you know said yes you know um, nice so yeah i'm very lucky and very privileged to have that so my new album will be out next year uh I don't ask me exactly when it's it's done it's just depending on what they never need to do you know mm. as a label I, I never understand that I, I i can't get my head around it there's a strategy apparently we were, apparently we, yeah we were talking to joey about this yesterday <laughs> and uh he there's various things in his future, and, it, and it's like, yeah, and that's going to be 2020. 20, yeah, it's what? like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's strange the way you know things happen. You know, things in the music industry, you have to be prepared to wait. Yeah, right. That's yeah. The biggest advice I can give to anyone: just wait. It will happen. You know, because I've been talking to the, the label. Well, for... that's a load off. I was, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. but, okay, <laughs> still waiting, but that's great. Okay, thanks, man. Like, it's all right. Look at that. So I've been waiting 25 years. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it's been, uh, you know, Mick sent me some links of some videos you're playing, and I've been like, wow. But actually, to see you and be in here doing it, it's like, it's a whole other level. Amazing, thank mate. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for coming down. Oh, thank you. Um, brilliant, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please uh, go and check out some more stuff from Simon. Um, also, please go and visit our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is. And it's the music of Guildford, Surrey. In the US of A is... Riff City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota and other locations. But are they opening a new store? I don't know, I should have checked. Okay. And in Australia... <laughs> Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, also, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you. And uh, some... Look at this. We have new uh, 1969 reissue T-shirts. Now, there has been some chatter about what schwang actually means. Right. A lot of people think it means penis. Who's laughing now, hey? <laughs> Doesn't that? Well, I, anyway, it means penis. If you say it right. If you say it right. Yeah, hey, look at use. my horn. My, uh, what an amazing step ladder you have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all, yeah, but schlong is the, is the one that I, yeah, yeah. You know. anyway, anyway. It means to have schwang, which means to go like this. Um, Did you, you miss what Simon said? What? The train relay goes, well, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, did you hear about the man that went into a bar and asked for a double entendre? No. The barmaid gave him one. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, thank you to Mr. Simon McBride again. Uh, let's um, go out with some more incredible tones. All right. Let's... Okay, little addendum. Um, it's now about an hour after we finished filming, maybe just a little more. We finished the filming and Dan was doing his nut because there was some noise happening and it was doing your nut. It was doing my we nut. Were, we were confused, turning some things off and on. There was some noise being created. Um, what did we conclude? Where did we conclude that noise was coming from? So, because there's so much gain in the amplifier um, and it, it, it just picks everything up. So um, what we've done, I have now I've isolated uh, another point of isolation. So the, the earth point is now between the effects send from the amplifier and the loop return here. But everything else is isolated. So you've put into practice what we were talking about in the noise yes. video. Because yes, I have. As you know, Dan and I tend to use not very gainy amps and get the gain from the pedals, and therefore the amp itself isn't creating a load of noise. Any gain amplifier, whether it's a PV5150 or a Crank Marshall, or you know any amp in that world, V30 Mark II is a great example. It's got mm. a ton of gain in it, and Simon likes the overdrive channel. Yep. So that was just amplifying all the other noise, and then when we're using the effects end of that to drive the other amp, it's like, and then compounded yeah, it. Yeah, have some more noise. Exactly. exactly. So you've you've cured it. Yes. Yeah, so, so we did that, but then we also put on the NS2 noise suppressor. Now it's just set. It's just you know it's so lightly on, but all it's doing is taking away the hiss from the from the preamp. So if you imagine, like when you go to the um, to the clean channel of this amplifier, right? So that's clean. I'll turn this off. You don't have that hiss, right? But as soon as we go to the, the gain channel, and that's what you get. Now, because I'm not used to that, as, as, as someone that uses preamp things a lot, yeah. that might be normal, but I just, I can't <laughs> live with that. <laughs> so, and I wasn't having Simon walking out of here with a board that would allow that to happen. So yeah. what we've done is we've put the NS2, and it's, it's not the pedals, it's just the preamp. So basically, the signal path is where the split happens. Oh, for goodness sake. Thank you, thank you. All right. So where the split happens, from loop six, it goes into the input of the NS2, right? The send from the NS2 goes to the humdinger. I sat it out the humdinger goes to the front end of the amplifier. So that's no, there's no earth connection yet. Then the effects send from the amplifier goes back to the return here on the NS2. That's our earth connection. Yeah. Okay. Um, then from the output, that, that goes back into the return of loop seven. So Sorry, the, the insert. The Dynatrem and um, the workstation are after the preamp, then out of that into another humdinger. So then you have another isolated output that goes to the return. Now, most amplifiers, um, will not need that secondary bit of isolation because you've got the, if you, if you can think where the effects center and the effects loop return are, they're I'm right next to each other. Mate, but, past right. five. <laughs> but what that also gives us is the ability then to send, um, to send another isolated output yeah, yeah. to another power amp return. So this gives us, like all we, all we can hear now is transformer hum. 
And if you want to have some schwang with that. Yeah, so my question about the schwang is, does it feel any different with it on or off? Because that's the important thing. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs>